What's up, legends, and welcome to probably the most insightful while simultaneously stupid video on this channel. Uh, I saw an opportunity and I full sent it, and I have absolutely no regrets. Take this as like the card conversation version of dyeing your face green and doing a She-Hulk first impressions video. But basically, if you haven't watched my Black Widow card conversation about the Moscow Protocol, you should go do that right now and then come back and watch this video because there was a point in that video where I was like, the Moscow Protocol, like, as an effect... Is kind of clunky because it's pretty hard to activate on your first turn of the game. How wrong was I? This card is actually incredibly easy to activate on the first turn of the game. Why? <laughs> We're about to find out. So if you haven't watched that card conversation yet, go watch it now. There will be something in the corner. Over there, up there, probably, um, if I remember to do that in post, but that's whatever. Um, so yeah, go watch that video first, then come back and watch this one. So let's get started right now. So Moscow Protocol, you trigger it by having an opposing fighter take damage on this turn, which if, if it's the first turn of the game, you have several options. Option A is you start in the same zone as an opposing fighter, you attack them first action, win the combat, deal some damage, then you can play the second action. Option two is you cannot attack an opposing fighter first action, so you have to maneuver on your first action. You then have to make an attack where you both somehow end up dealing damage to them and gain an action. And this can be very tricky to do since the only action gain you have in your deck is fake out. And it is conditional on losing the combat, which means you can't both deal damage and gain an action from the effect of your cards alone. So you need some help from your opponent. And as you can see, this will get pretty ridiculous pretty quickly. Uh, so <laughs> maneuvering first action to then attack deal damage, and gain an action, which then can be used to play Moscow Protocol, which then can be played to, or can, you, you have another action after that, so it's a fun little time. Uh, these cards are important because these are the only cards Maria Hill can attack with in your entire deck, which means uh, you're either going to be playing Fake Out and really hoping to lose the combat and have a, your opponent help you out with the damage part uh, you're going to be playing faint maybe first action and hope they play for regroup or don't defend so that you can play Moscow Protocol second action after dealing some damage or you're going to play acting director of shield as an attack as <laughs> something that will let you move your fighters but will not let you recur a scheme because you haven't played a scheme at this point and you're just playing it for the value and hoping that you hit over your opponent's block card, which is probably going to be like a, th a three, like worst case scenario, but it's also best case scenario because you're winning the combat. I don't know. Maria Hill, uh, kind of predictable when you look at her attack spread like this because if your opponent just like has a four and they play a four, you can't win the combat. But um, anyways, like w whether or not it's correct to attack with this when you can't get the scheme back, um, it's not really up for debate because it's probably not a good card to use first action, first turn, first attack of the game. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes if you really want to proc this Moscow Protocol, you got to make some sacrifices. So let's talk about maps where you do not have to maneuver on your first action to attack an opponent. On both of the Bigfoot Robin Hood maps, Yukon and Sherwood Forest, you can have Maria Hill start in a spot where she can attack an opponent, hero, an opposing hero, first action of your first turn of the game, which can be 
pretty cool. This is where you, you play that blank four value versatile acting director of shield and hope to hit over the top of Winter Soldier's puny defenses. This is just a, an inset example of a solo hero. Um, <laughs> not necessarily Winter Soldier specifically, it just represents any hero. And if you hit over the top or some miracle happens, then you can play Moscow Protocol second action. Uh, I just want to specify, I'm going to put my face back here. I'm not saying that playing Moscow Protocol first turn is a good idea. I just realized it's possible and want to explain how. <laughs> I do not recommend playing Acting Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. on your first action of your first turn to deal like one damage to the opposing hero just so that you can play a <laughs> this game. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Uh, then we have maps where you can attack an opposing hero's sidekick if they position them poorly. Uh, because you're going first, you're going to place your sidekick down before the opposing hero. So <laughs> if you're opposing, if your opponent is like, yeah, sure, why not? You can attack my sidekick on your turn first turn of the game. I don't know why they would do this, but, you know, me memes, I guess. Um, King Solomon's Mine, they place it in this white, red, and yellow zone. You can be in this red spot. <sighs> Hero Rot, they can place it in either of these two spots, and, or I guess three spots, and you can attack it with the red, or you can just be adjacent to it in the orange zone. Navy Pier, you put Maria Hill down here and your opponent's like, well, I don't know which which purple spot my sidekick's gonna go in. I guess I'll put them here. <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, Ellie Carrier, purple to purple or yellow to yellow. Raptor Paddock. You know, if they have a ranged sidekick, they want to start it on <laughs> tri-zone spot. And let... this, is, this is so... This is this is so stupid. Um, Sunnydale High. If you place Maria in either of these two spots, she can attack an adjacent enemy there, or in this red and pink spot. Your opponent can pick the one spot you would be able to attack them in. Uh, Sanctum Sanctorum. Uh, if you'd be really aggressive with your sidekick, and your opponent is like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" <laughs> Instead of just not doing that. Uh, Hanging Gardens. This one actually is probably the most realistic one out of all of these because your opponent might place their sidekick here just so their hero doesn't get high ground attacked on their first turn. Uh, this probably largely depends on what block cards they have in their hand, but if you place Maria like this, you'd be able to attack Shuri first action. Although if Shuri, I mean their sidekick, but... Um, like I use Winter Soldier for the hero, I'm using Black Panther for the sidekick example, just because this is like an inbox matchup. I thought I'd theme it with for King and Country. Um, would it be a good idea to attack their sidekick first action instead of just like maneuvering, getting high ground, and then maybe like dealing more damage on your second action so that you don't get to play the scheme on your first turn? Does that matter? <laughs> Alternatively, if you're if you put Maria there and then your opponent puts their sidekick here, you could make an attack on this pale zone. Soho, uh, Maria in either of these spots can attack a sidekick here, and if you're in the dark spot, you can attack a sidekick in this top corner. Marmorial, if you put Maria in either of these spots with the green. You can attack an opponent who puts their sidekick in one of these two spots with the green and the brown. Or alternatively, if you put Maria Hill here, your opponent can put Shuri, their sidekick, right next to you and be like, yeah, go for it. And lastly, we have Baskerville, which, again, this is pretty ridiculous. You put your sidekick next to you and they go, yes, please eat my sidekick for breakfast. So these are just really stupid examples of ways you could make an attack with your sidekick on your first action against an opponent's sidekick without having to maneuver. Um, I'm going to show my face again. Like, again, 
these are stupid examples that reply uh, reply that require your opponent to make bad choices and kind of like dare you to do this. And even then, like you're not really like attacking them with good cards. So like again, I'm not recommending you try to do this. I'm just saying it's possible. Now, the following scenarios are, I think, the most interesting part of this video because they reminded me of, like, Chad's puzzles. I was trying to figure out how can you be able to trigger Moscow Protocol without having a card that both deals damage and gains an action in your deck. And I think I came up with, like, seven, six or seven examples of this. Uh, again... It requires your opponent being a moron and making a horrible choice, but um, if you want to pause the video now and think about what fighters you might be able to actually trigger this against, um, maybe just like write down your comment in a guess, write down your guess in a comment, and and then resume and see how many of these you got, or if maybe you even got one that I didn't get. Um, so yeah, I'll give you five, four. 27, 3, 1. All right, perfect. I know how to count. Let's get into some examples. So first one is Moon Knight. Uh, this was the first one I thought of after I like made that little footnote in the video. I was like, there's probably a fighter that's like right on the tip of my tongue that can deal damage to themselves that I like am not thinking of. And lo and behold, immediately I was like, oh, you're a moron. Um, so basically, first action, you maneuver. You then attack with fake out with either of your fighters into a totally sane thing to do or good enough for us, which Moon Knight opts to do because both of these are May. Moon Knight doesn't have to take the damage, but if he wants the card draw or he wants to deal two damage to the fighter that attacked him, uh, sure, he'll take the damage and then you will lose the combat because you didn't deal damage and you'll gain an action which then can be used to play Moscow Protocol because an opposing fighter took damage this turn. Cool. You have successfully missioned on your first turn of the game. Woohoo. Next example, we actually have Bullseye. You maneuver, you attack with Fake Out with either of your fighters into specifically Ricochet because Ricochet says if the opposing fighter was not defeated, deal one damage to a fighter in the opposing fighter's zone. So a fighter includes Bullseye himself. So again, you're starting to see how stupid this whole concept is, but if Bullseye ricochets himself into your turn one fake out, you then will gain the action for losing the combat and an opposing fighter took damage this turn so you can mission on the very first turn of the game outstanding move the next one is achilles this one is probably the most obvious because the other the, the fake out method where you gain an action by losing the combat and somehow have the opponent deal damage to themselves is very convoluted whereas this is like one of the only cards in the game that just like gives your opponent an action so you have to be black widow so you maneuver attack achilles specifically as black widow specifically with your five specifically into an Achilles heel specifically, and you will actually win the combat with your five over the four. You'll deal a damage, and then because Achilles lost, you'll gain an action. So then, with your gained action, because an opposing fighter took damage this turn, you can Moscow Protocol and successfully play a mission on, well, this specific mission on the first turn of the game. It's really easy to play the the your starting spot mission on the first turn of the game, but... Uh, Moscow Protocol is for style points. Next, we have Doctor Strange, which you maneuver. You attack with either of your characters with Fake Out into Doctor Strange specifically, who blocks with either Master of Carmartage, Cloak of Levitation, or Seven Sons of Cinnabon, because if he then uses his ability, because he played a card... You can deal, or your opponent can deal one damage to him to get the card on the bottom of the deck and draw a card. And then you will lose the combat with Fake Out into any of these cards. And then because an opposing fighter took damage this turn and you have an action, you can then play Moscow Protocol and Mission on the first turn of the game. Uh, this 
will not work into faint because you will lose the effect of fake out. And it probably won't work into mists of Manipur because fake out will get discarded and the only other way you'll be able to gain an action is if you get the other fake out out of your deck, the one other fake out, and it has to be in your deck, not your hand, and it has to be the first attackable card that you draw with that character. Uh, so yeah, and of course remember that Doctor Strange has to actually use his ability in, in order for the damage aspect to get required. So um, yeah. Next we have Houdini. This is probably the worst one, but you maneuver on your first action. Second action, you attack with Fake Out with either of your characters into Houdini specifically. He plays Grand Escape, chooses to boost, even though he's already winning, and he boosts with Misdirection specifically and deals two damage to one of his characters. Um, <laughs> so like, obviously I thought about that interaction before, but like saying it out loud is just so stupid. You boost in a combat, you're already winning. And deal damage to one of your own fighters. <laughs> but then, you'll lose the combat, and then because an opposing fighter took damage this turn, you'll be able to play the Moscow Protocol and successfully play that mission on the first turn of the game. <laughs> um, yeah, then we have Deadpool. And you maneuver, you attack with either one of your fighters with fake out into Deadpool's, they have an amazing buffet, because you will not deal any damage. Deadpool's after combat says recover two health, he'll be at 10 health at this point, and then if he's at full health, which he is, he'll take two damage. You'll then lose the combat, gain an action, and then because... An opposing fighter took damage this turn, you'll be able to play the Moscow Protocol and successfully protocol on the first turn of the game. Why Deadpool would play this card at full health to begin with <laughs> is very, very silly. Like, the, the best case scenario for this interaction is Black Widow attacking him with the five, and then he takes two and immediately... Oh, but he'd still be at full health! What a moron. So you, get, you just wouldn't play this card. <laughs> you just, you, <laughs> I was like, yeah, maybe if she plays the biggest attack in her deck. Uh, nope. Still will take damage. Okay. So yeah. Big brain plays only. And lastly, we have Buffy. You maneuver. You attack with fake out with either one of your characters into Buffy specifically. She plays Slayer Strength and moves her sidekick, who is adjacent to her, somewhere in her zone, which deals one damage to it. You'll lose the combat. An opposing fighter took damage from... Probably an effect that only damaged it and not one of your characters. And then you'll be able to play the Moscow Protocol and successfully mission on the first turn of the game. So yeah, if we look at all of these, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven examples that I came up with. And I think Achilles is probably the most realistic of happening, followed by Moon Knight followed by Doctor Strange in a distant, distant third place. I think the Bullseye, Houdini, Deadpool, and Buffy ones are just rubbish and not really going to happen. But um, there you go. That is the 
Picard conversation continuation about how to play the Moscow Protocol on the first turn of the game. What you're going to do with this information, I have no clue, and I am... I guess I'm not really sorry for wasting your time since you clicked on the video seeing how long it was and you are still here. Um, <laughs> so if you are still watching, please type Moss Cow Proto Cow with the cows being in all caps and the other letters being lowercase as a symbol of solidarity with my commitment to the bet <laughs> this um this is nonsense okay so yeah um my name is baked goods the <laughs> strategy guide guy for unmatched <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching and joining me on this nonsense journey and as always, like, subscribe, and mission on the first turn of the game. <laughs>